context-free languages and review what questions we know can be decided for context-free languages and try to prove that some of the others really can't be instead of me just telling you that they can't be. OK, here's one question. Context-free language, does it equal the empty set? Somebody gives you a grammar, they want to know, does it generate something or absolutely nothing? Can you decide that or not? You can turn it into the Chomsky normal form and see if, there's, if S is a useless symbol. Mm -hmm. Right. Perfectly reasonable way to do it. So this is decidable. It's one of the few things that's decidable about context-free language. OK, I'm going to put, just to contrast, DCFLs over here. Somebody gives you a DCFL and wants to know if it's empty or not. Is that decidable or undecidable? Decidable. Yeah, how come? Well, all of those are those. OK. <laughs> all right, so I just. Do the same thing. I take it and I check if the start symbol is, is useful or not. OK, so that's the side of it. Right, all of those are those. What about this problem? The language equals everything. It generates absolutely everything. Let's do it first for GCFLs. Is it hard or easy to check if the language generates everything for DCFLs? Can you do it or not? Can you minimize the DCFL? No. Too bad. <laughs> Be nice. Now, there's no minimum pushdown machine or anything like that. You can think about things like that. You can ask yourself, you know, what's the minimum number of stack symbols I need to use, or the minimum number of states, and try to make some kind of theorems about that. But, but there aren't very many useful ones. Well, I'll give you a hint. The answer is that you can definitely do it. And it's not so hard. When I tell you how, you'll say, oh. It relates to a closure property. What are DCFLs closed under? They're closed under complement, right? So if I give you a machine and I want to know if it accepts everything, you could just take the complement of the machine, that's also a DCFL, and check if that accepts nothing. If it accepts nothing, then the original accepts everything. So this is definitely decidable, and in parentheses, because of closure of complement. But if you try to do that same trick for regular context-free languages, it fails. Because when you take the complement, you don't necessarily get another context-free language. So asking whether a context-sensitive language or a more unrestricted grammar is equal to nothing, that's undecidable. So if you take a language and you take its complement and it knocks you out of the context-free languages up higher up, and then you're hoping to check whether that's empty in order to determine whether the original was everything, you're dead in the water because checking whether Turing machines or unrestricted grammars accept nothing, that's hard to do. And in fact, doing this is hard to do. There's no way around it. And I'm going to show this to you. I'm going to prove to you today that checking whether a given CFL accepts everything is undecidable. Is, is um, mm -hmm. the complement of a deterministic one, can the, you get that the same way you can for finite state machines? Yes, modulo some stupid technicalities. If you actually try to do it, you'll find some little details that show up, and you'll say, why didn't Shai tell me about that? And it's because I didn't feel like it. There are, some, there are some dumb technicalities involved, but essentially it's the same proof with, with finite state machines. Essentially, the non-final states become final states, and the final states become non-final states. And since it's deterministic, everything works out just fine. Essentially, it's the same proof. OK, uh, here's some other questions. Take two languages, L1 and L2. You want to know if they have anything in common. Are they completely distinct? Or do they have something in common? Is there something in their intersection or not? 
That's undecidable for context-free languages. And in fact, I think it's also undecidable for deterministic context-free language. I'm pretty sure. I'm going to check. It's probably in our list. Yes, it is. So sometimes there's a distinction between deterministic context-free and context-free, and sometimes there's not. Here's a question. If I give you a language and I take its complement, I'd like to know, is that context-free or not? If I was able to know that, I might be able to make better use out of my trick over here. Somebody gives me a language, is, it, is its complement context-free or not? Context-free language, is its complement context-free? Sometimes it will be, sometimes it won't be. To determine that, yes or no, is undecidable for context-free languages. What if I gave you a deterministic context-free language and I ask you, is its complement deterministic context-free? What's your answer? Yes. Your answer is yes. So that's, there's definitely an algorithm that says that. It's the algorithm that says, you know, print line yes, or whatever your language does to print the word yes. So we say that this is trivial, which means decidable. So some of these problems are just trivial, and some are decidable, and, and they're a little harder. Here's a good one. Somebody gives you two languages, and they want to know if they're the same. Now, this is not just some stupid esoteric question about grammars. Somebody in one company builds a compiler for the ANSI standard of Java, or whatever there's an ANSI standard for nowadays, and some other companies also building a competing compiler, and everybody wants to know, do they really do the same thing? Do they generate the exact same language? Are they both Java compilers? And the answer is, you can't send it to the equality checking, VeriSign compiler checking company that will tell you if they're really the same. There's no algorithm that does that. So you can't check, in general, whether two compilers really accept the same language. Some particular two you might be able to check, but not two in general. So undecidable. So you can't check if two chips are identical. Mm, that's a little trickier, but generally not. Right. Because chips don't always necessarily generate things as complicated as context-free languages. There are chips that are just finite state machines, and then you could. Right? So for complex enough circuits, the answer would be it's undecidable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Could you just um, mention why that's undecidable? Oh, you mean like why? I haven't proved that any of these are really undecidable yet. You mean why intuitively it's hard to do this? Yeah. How would you try to do this? What would you do? You could, you could try every string and check it membership in one language and check its membership in the other language. There is a decision algorithm for doing membership. So you check, and you check them, say, in size order. First, we'll check the empty string. Then we'll check 0, then 1, then 0, 0, then 0, 1, then 1, 0, then 1, 1, etc. We'll check all the strings in the whole world in size order. And we'll check each one in both these languages. And if any one is accepted by both languages, we'll stop and we'll say yes. And that's true. If the answer to this is that they have something in common, we'll be able to stop and say yes. But what if they have nothing in common? We're going to just go through this forever and ever and ever and ever. We'll never find one string that's in both. And we'll just have the person who typed in the question waiting and waiting for an answer. And they won't find out whether it's yes or no. Does that give you some intuition as to why it's hard? It doesn't mean it's really hard. That's just, one, that's just the only way I can think of doing it. And it's not a good way. Wow. L1 equals L2, there's a question mark for Yeah. And we're up to that right now. Good point, Michael. L1 equals L2. I give you two deterministic context-free languages. Do they generate the same language? This is really the question about compilers, right? Because compilers are all deterministic context-free languages. They're not really non-deterministic. They're all in, in that world. So this is a very important question. An automatic compiler equality checker. That would be nice. So as of the publication of this 